This coat pocket sized transistor radio is the Sylvania Model 5P16. It was built in the late 1950s and it seems to be fairly uncommon today. I can't say I've seen too many examples of this model. The cabinet construction is pretty unusual. These end pieces here are anodized aluminum and then the rest of it is a plastic extrusion. It's a 5 transistor radio and it plays fairly well for what it is. People who are incredibly famous in this country can go, if they're five feet nine, you know, can go to, to other cities, see Europe or other. Of course it starts cutting out when I'm doing a video. I'm going to take the cover off and see if that's because the battery is shorting out or something like that before any damage is done. You can see this latch only opens one way and it's not marked as to which way but counterclockwise is the way you want to turn this and you really have to use a screwdriver because it takes a fair bit of force this uh, paper towel business wasn't there originally I just added that so the battery wouldn't be rattling around oh. that was the problem this wasn't making good contact now it's working reliably This set is among the most tricky pocket radios to take apart, so I'm not going to do it again just for this video. I do have some pictures of the inside of the radio that I can add though. You can see it says Sylvania model 5P16 and there's a layout diagram for the transistors down in there. The chassis looks like it was originally designed to take six transistors but then they made some modifications to make it use only five. The transistor they removed from the design was one of the output transistors so now it's a single ended design. and it draws a, a constant 15 milliamps from the battery so that'll make the battery not last all that long especially the older carbon zinc batteries there's almost room in there for a 6 AA cell holder but not quite unfortunately you can see the paint on this set is in great shape there can't be too many of these that are so nice although there is some damage to the little dial bright there it has a handle that slides out it's not spring loaded or anything but it does the job and there's a earphone jack on the back there. There's a serial number here. I'm assuming it encodes the date somehow. But I don't know how to translate that. Maybe one of you guys does. Post a comment if you do. I'd appreciate it. The chassis in this thing may look familiar to some of you. And that's because it's the same chassis that went into a lot of Belova's transistor radios. I had been wondering who was making them for... Uh, Belova, and it appears the answer is Sylvania, unless they bought the chassis from the same source. But I kind of doubt it, because Sylvania seems to have manufactured their own radios, unlike Belova, who bought from various U.S. companies and then uh, eventually from Japanese companies. I will briefly describe how the set comes apart, but I'm not going to take the set apart on camera. It's just too tricky, and I don't want to risk uh, cracking the case. It already has a repaired crack. So you take off the volume knob and undo this screw. You undo this screw and pull this piece off. And then you gotta carefully slide the top part back a little bit and then kind of bend the lowercase outward like that. 
until you can pop the uh, top off. The reason you have to slide it back a bit is to get clearance on on this uh, clip here. I don't know how easy it is to see in there. It's definitely tricky to take apart. I don't know why Sylvania built it this way. It must have been a little tricky to manufacture and assemble. Seems like it would just be easier to use a traditional molded case. There's the crack I was talking about. I haven't tried to polish it away, but I did carefully glue it with the uh, super glue. Other than that crack though, there's really hardly any marks on it. I think that's mainly because it was kept in this case here, which is uh, probably going to go in the garbage because it's broken and it uh, actually kind of smells as well. Made mostly of uh, you know cheap imitation leather. You can see there, that's, that's not real leather, it's just cardboard with vinyl over it. The strap is real leather and it's also real brittle. If I were to bend this, uh, I think that would just break. Thanks for watching.